David, fresh off the earnings call, Tony Capuano, CEO of Marriott. Tony, th welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Seema. Good to be back. Thanks for having me. Strong numbers. And as you said on the call, luxury remains a standout with JW Marriott, Ritz-Carlton, W, among the highest in terms of hotel occupancy. It also costs a lot more with average daily rate 27 percent above pre-pandemic levels. And I think the one question that continues to come up, Tony, is, is this sustainable in an environment where inflation is becoming a bigger concern? We think so, Seema. We see extraordinarily strong leisure demand. Leisure has led the travel recovery. In fact, in the quarter, we were up about 10% uh, leisure demand relative to 2019. But I think what gives us continued optimism is the recovery we're seeing in the other two segments, in groups, certainly, but also in business transient, which has maybe been the slowest of the three segments to recover. Yeah, we'll get to business in a second. I also you know, just want to get your sense around the shorter booking window. I know that's impacting your visibility into the third and fourth quarter, but what kind of color can you provide us, Tony, on just what you're hearing from business travelers, clients that you speak to on how strong the summer could be at a time when we are entering an environment where rates are rising fast and furious? When we look at our forward booking data, we think the summer is going to be gangbusters. Uh, I just was in Europe last week. Uh, the forward bookings, as more and more Western European borders are opening, look exceedingly strong, uh, both in our fly-to and our drive-to leisure destinations. We see really strong demand at really strong pricing. Uh, so we feel great about the summer. And that's allowed you to resume your share repurchases, reinstate your dividend first time in two years, which was sooner than the market was expecting. Internationally, Tony, what are you seeing? It seems like you saw revenue per available growth in all regions except China. What's the story there with the lockdowns? When do you see some green shoots emerging in that region? Uh, it really will relate to how the Chinese government handles their, their COVID policy. Uh, even great markets like Shanghai are, are shuttered right now, and that, that's been... Uh, terribly impactful to demand patterns. But when you look at other international markets around the world, as broad vaccination distribution occurs, as borders open, uh, maybe the Middle East is the best example of that. Uh, we saw meaningful RevPAR improvement over 2019 in the quarter, and we expect that to continue through the balance of the year. Tony, it's Morgan. You just talked about strong pricing. Obviously, we have this pent-up demands. We know it's costing more to travel in general right now. When you do raise prices, how sticky are those increases? We think quite sticky. The, um, we've been uh, really encouraged by the, the speed with which pricing power has returned. In the last two big shocks to the travel and tourism sector, those being post-9-11 and the Great Recession, it took between four and five years for pricing power to really recover. And so it's really remarkable that two years after the start of the pandemic, we're talking about pricing that's meaningfully ahead of where we were in 2019. And I think that really illustrates the, the depth of that pent up demand that we're seeing around the world. And just in terms of tiers uh, from a socioeconomic standpoint, where are you seeing the most strength? Is it high end travelers or is it across the board? It's really across the board. One of the things we mentioned in the earnings call is across quality tiers and across types of markets, primary, secondary, tertiary, we're seeing broad recovery of travel. So that may be in our select service portfolio, in drive-to destinations, all the way up to fly-to luxury resorts and city hotels. Uh, regarding business travel, Tony, one thing on the call, I'll just read it. You said larger companies have recovered more slowly than smaller sized businesses, which have now fully recovered. Why do you think we're seeing that discrepancy? A few reasons, I think. Number one, uh, many of the big urban cities where those, uh, those companies conduct business have been a little slower to open up. I think number two, some of those big multinationals continue to be focused on managing travel costs. And I think number three, those are companies that continue to think about their carbon footprints, and we're working collaboratively with them to help them achieve both objectives, getting out and seeing their customers and being thoughtful about um, the environment. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.